Hi guys, welcome to this our video on Pearson's correlation coefficient in brackets R. And the in brackets is the important part here because it's a little R. More on that in just a moment. Thanks very much for joining me. My name is Darren from Maths Guru and it is an honour to be able to try and make maths simple for you guys here. And I'm doing it for the general maths course at this moment in time. Now, before I get started, can you do me the honour please of subscribing or following me on TikTok? Yes, I'm on TikTok. I know I'm too old. But anyway... Uh, it just lets me know that you are, in fact, watching. That one little click from you means the world to me because I think I've got about six people watching my videos. If you can, leave a comment and spread the word to your mates and teachers if you can, letting them know that this resource is there. That is, if you find it useful. Now, what I tend to do is look at the learning objectives, and we're building on the stuff that we have done in previous videos, right? We want to know what it means by correlation. Hopefully, by the end of this video, we'll know uh, that there's a measure of correlation. Be able to understand the correlation coefficient of what it is and use it to describe linear relationships. And the important point there is linear relationships. And understand what causation is and the three main types. All right, there's a lot in here, so let's get going. All right, now in past lessons, we've got you to be able to use your CAS to be able to plot a scatter graph, right? And when we have two numerical data items, then we can plot them and show them in a scatter plot. So as we can see here, we've got time on the bottom and we've got the mark here. So I, I don't know what the, re the, the relationship is here, but again, always remember that the EV is on the bottom and the RV is up the side. The RV is what we're predicting. So in this situation, or remember the context of the question, the amount of time spent revising and the scores on tests. So what we notice here is there is a relationship. It seems to be that as the time increases, our test score increases. And notice the use of the word increases. Examiners want you to use the word increase and decrease throughout this particular section and later on in the course. We see a pattern, a correlation, a relationship. Again, Barry, why are we doing this? Why couldn't we just call it the one thing? But... Having done that, we need to do more with it. Having done the scatter plot, we need to now look at it and go, well, okay, what can we tell? How close are those points to each other? How far apart are they? Is there, in fact, a relationship? And that's very much what this video talks about here. Now, Pearson, no idea who he is. Obviously very important. He's got a table, hasn't he? Look at him, he's got some values. And he came up and he said, right, there's got to be a way of describing how close a set of points are to some sort of magical straight line. And again, if we go back here, if I was to draw some magical straight line that went through sort of the middle of those, then we'd want to know how far away those points are, those points are from my dotted line. And as a hint, the dotted line later on helps us predict values. Well, he came up with a mathematical way of doing it, which I'll explain to you in a moment. But the most important thing here is to have that table in your summary book. Again, this is another topic where the more you put in your summary book and the more you understand, the better you are going to be. Now, the value of Pearson's correlation coefficient is given by R. And what you need to notice is the value of R goes from the number one through zero all the way down to negative one. Now, if it's a one, it means that all of the points are in a perfect straight line. So that there is a perfect straight line. But minus one means all the points are in a perfect straight line as well. So what's the difference? Ah, well a one means they are in a perfect straight line going up, and a minus one means they are in a perfect straight line going down. Oh, sorry, minus one means going down. Now again, if you want to download these notes from maskaroo.com, sign up for free, and then you can write all over them as I am talking, or just put it in your summary book. And he came up and said, okay, well, if we get this R value that falls between, let's say, 0 0.75 and 0 0.99, we will describe that uh, relationship as a strong, positive, linear uh, association. Now there are four very important words there. Strong, positive, sloping up, linear, come back to that in a moment, and association. There is some sort of pattern between these. He said if we have a value of R that falls somewhere say between 0 0.24 and minus 0 0.24, that there is absolutely no association whatsoever. Those points are literally drawn by my three-year-old all over a piece of paper. 
So these values are what we are looking out for. And finally, if we had a negative 0 0.5 to 0 0.79 or minus 0 0.74, then we have a moderate negative linear association. And again, in exams, we are asking you to write those words exactly in that order if we give you an R value. But, all right, we just need to make sure that once we have this R value, we read the table. Now, here are some examples. All right? Do you remember I said an R value somewhere between what was it? Minus 0.25, sorry, minus 0.24 and 0.24. There we go. So that is what an R value of zero would look like. Those dots are literally all over the place. Yes, my daughter has been dotting on a piece of paper. An R of plus one, I said, was perfect. The points are in a perfect straight line. You couldn't get them any closer to some sort of magical line of best fit. And minus one comes straight down. Now, there is a word of warning here. Later on, you are going to be finding R squared. They're going to give you an R squared. Not necessarily in this year's course, but we'll see. And you are going to have to take that to a value of R. Well, hopefully, you would know that the square root of R squared would in fact give you the value of R. There's a but. When you square root a number, it can be both positive and negative. And why is that important to you? Well, a positive value of R slopes up, a negative value of R slopes down. And again, questions trick people using this over and over and over again. Here are some more examples, again, from the table. An R of 0 0.915. Where would that put me? That would put me in here. So there we would use, if that was in my exam and it says, you know, describe the association, I'd be saying strong, positive, linear association. 0 0.767. So 0 0.767, where would that put me? 767 also in a strong, positive linear association. Minus 0 0.874 would put me in here, a strong negative linear association. All right, so again, reading it off using those words, there are some buts here. And this information couldn't be more important, okay? So, that's what's got the slide of its own, put it in your summary book. One, it measures the strength of a linear relationship, all right? If we have a curve, we cannot use R. It doesn't make any sense. R is for linear, all right? It has a value between negative one and one, all right? Positive numbers mean it's a positive relationship. Negative numbers mean it's a negative relationship, yes? And again, there are two other things you need to be aware of here. R assumes, so by using the letter of R, you are assuming that the data is linear. That's important. And you are assuming that both variables are numerical. That comes in again a little bit later on in the course, but this is all important information. Now I'm going to move on to probably one of the stupidest thing I've ever ever taught in my entire life, and that's causation. It's stupid probably because we just deal with it very, very smallly, but we want to look at whether there is one cause, more than one cause, or no causes whatsoever for a relationship to, be, to happen, all right? So what I mean by that is, we can show that if I was to plot the number of ice creams sold against the number of hats sold, believe it or not, it would look like this. And you're going to go, huh? Literally, there is an association between the number of ice cream sold and the number of hats sold. But why? Ice cream and hats in themselves have no relationship to each other at all. They depend on one other thing. And that one other thing is temperature, absolutely. So we know there that that relationship may show, there's no issue, that, or that graph may show there's an association, but it's because of a common response. Now a common response in that situation sounds like there's only one thing there. So a common response would be temperature. That as the temperature's going up, more people would buy hats to protect their heads and more people buy ice creams to keep themselves cool. So that's what we're very much looking for here um, in this particular section of the video, yes? So, if data about the variable crime rates and unemployment in a range of cities were gathered and a high correlation will be found, can it be inferred that a high unemployment causes high uh, crime rates? 
Well, maybe, and again, I've given an answer here. What could link unemployment and crime rates? Well, sadly, it could be education level. So education may be a common response, yes? As education increases, all right, so as our level of education increases, our level of crime decreases. And again, we don't always have to have things sloping up they can slope down. So as we are more educated, theoretically speaking, we would commit less crime, all right? So that there is a common response. One thing, there may be other things, but in this situation, let's just assume it was education. Now, then we have confounding, all right? Or confounding variables. Now in that situation, if we were to find a high correlation between smoking and heart disease, the question is, does smoking in itself cause heart disease? Is there a direct link? No. There's probably lots of different reasons why an increase in smoking leads to an increase in heart disease. And again, the chances are that's going to slope up. All right. Now, one possible explanation is that people who smoke are also likely to neglect other lifestyle factors. They may not exercise. For example, yes, they may have a really bad diet. Now, they're two fairly major things, exercise and diet. We can't pin it on one of those. It could be more than one of those. There could be lots of other reasons as well. Education, again, weirdly, could come into that. So because we can't pinpoint it to one different thing, we say that this there is a confounding variables or confounding uh, variables. Yeah, confounding variables, right? So more than one confounding. And then there is a complete coincidence. It actually turns out there is a strong correlation between the amount of cheese being consumed and the number of people who die due to bed sheets. Yep, go figure. Really? Yes. I don't know which country this is in, but apparently there is a pretty high correlation between the amount of cheese someone eats and the number of people who died become entangled. Now, I don't know about you, there is not one reason why that would be. There's probably not four or five reasons why that would be. It is a complete coincidence. So in that situation, we would say it is a coincidence. Apparently, there is also an almost perfect correlation between the number of Ikeas in a country and the number of Nobel Prizes that people have won in the same country. Go figure. Yes, that means that the more intelligent people love shopping in Ikea. Doesn't make any sense whatsoever. There we go, that's the end of this video. Hopefully it has been useful. Again, not lots of examples for me to be able to work on, sadly. But the point of it is, we've looked at, um, what is it, causation, those three ring reasons, common response, confounded variables, and uh, coincidence. We've also looked at um, what the value of R is and how to read the table. My name's Darren, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully it's been useful. Um, if it has, leave me a comment. If not, please don't leave me a comment. Tell your mates, tell your friends, subscribe on YouTube and follow me on TikTok. TikTok. Uh, thank you very much. Take care, guys. See you again soon.